the diary of a German soldier who fought in the army group, North, described an interesting incident that happened to him at the very beginning of the war, in July 1941. The author of the diary himself did not survive the war. He died in early 1943 near Stalingrad. Further the story from his words from the first person. We with other comrades hurried to see who caused us such damage, and went to the left of the column, climbing a small hill, slightly elevated a hundred meters from the road. A group of our officers and soldiers were already standing on this hill, holding their weapons at the ready. All of them were looking at something on the ground that hid their figures from me. As I approached this group from the side, I saw a picture that haunted me for many sleepless nights afterward. On a hillside there was a very shallow trench, around which were visible a few craters either from mines or from small caliber cannon. Near the trench lay the prostrate body of a Russian soldier sprawled on the ground, probably from nearby explosions. A Russian machine gun without a shield stood on the berm, and its barrel cooling hood was tightly wrapped with dirty rags. Apparently to keep the water in it so that it would not run out through the holes punched by the bullets. Next to the machine gun on his right side lay a second dead Russian soldier in a dirty, blood-stained uniform. His right hand, covered with thick dust and also with blood, remained on the machine gun handle. The features of his face and bloodstains and earth were rather Slavic, and I had seen such dead faces before. But the most striking thing about this dead man was that he was missing both legs almost to the knee and the bloody stumps were tightly tied with either ropes or belts to stop the bleeding. Apparently, the dead machine gun crew had been left by the Russians on this hill to delay the advance of our troops along the road. The machine gunners engaged our unit ahead of us and were fired back by artillery fire. This suicidal behavior of the already dead Russians caused a lively discussion among our soldiers and officers. One officer swore that these brutes had killed at least five of his soldiers riding in the front car and had ruined the car itself. The soldiers were discussing what was the point of the Russians taking up defenses on this high ground, which could be bypassed from all sides and their position was undefended. I, too, had the same thoughts, and I decided to share them with my friend, who was standing near the Russian trench silently wiping the brass mouthpiece of his smoking pipe with a piece of overcoat cloth. He always did this when something greatly upset or alarmed him. He naturally saw and heard the same thing as I did. Coming very close to him, I tried to sound like a brave soldier and said, What idiots those Russians are, aren't they? What could the two of them do to our battalion on this field? And then, my friend suddenly changed for me. There was suddenly no trace of his calm solidity, based on old combat experience. In a low voice, so that the others couldn't hear him, he literally growled through his teeth at me. Idiots! All of us together are not worth two of these Russians. Remember, punk, we've already lost the war in Russia. I was stunned at such a sudden change in my senior mentor, and he turned away from the crowd of our soldiers surrounding the Russian trench and raised his chin silently looked at the distant Russian horizon. Then he nodded to himself three times, as if agreeing with some hidden thoughts of his own, and slouching slightly, he walked leisurely to our truck. When he had left me a dozen meters away, he turned back to me and said in a calm, familiar voice, Go back to the car, Walter. We'll go soon. The author of the diary did not survive the war. He left his notes with his parents during a vacation in 1942 with the words, I know for sure that I will not return home, because the Russians have only one goal to kill us all.